بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته التحية لكل جمعكم الكريم من السادة الوزراء والأساتذة والضيوف والسفراء والطلاب وكل الحضور الكريم بمغاماتكم الرفيعة أنا سعيد جدا أشارك معكم في هذا المؤتمر أنا بتحدث معكم من جامعة كوين ماري University of London وحقيقة هذا المؤتمر يعتبر يعني من أهم المؤتمرات اللي أنا كنت حريص وما زلت جدا إنه أشارك فيها وأتمنى لكم كل التوفيق وكل الأوراق اللي أنا شفتها في هذا المؤتمر يعني أوراق مهمة جدا وحقيقة النخبة متخصصة ومستفردة جدا ونيرة جدا من العلماء والخبراء وحقيقة أنا تابعت كل العمل الجنبه بروفيسور بكري حتى في لغائين كانوا في لندن حتى لما نيجي لندن لزياراته السريعة بيقعد بيتناقش معنا ويجينا في الجامعة وواحدة من الحاجات اللي ما أنساها يوم جاتني مسج من دكتورة ماجدة في الجروب بتاع المؤتمر الساعة اثنين ونص صباحا توقيت لندن يعني الناس دي شغالين ليل ونهار بروفيسور إشراق وكل الوقت أنا ما عايز أذكر أسماء يعني أنا متابع معاهم وحقيقة كون الجامعة في السودان تطرق هذا الموضوع وهو من أهم المواضيع في العالم وحوريكم ليه من أهم المواضيع في العالم لأنه هذا الموضوع أصبح هو الشغل الشاغل للحكومات هو الشغل الشاغل للمنظمات العالمية كالأمم المتحدة هو الشغل الشاغل للشباب للمرأة هو الشغل الشاغل للأكاديميين لأنه بيقت حقيقة واضحة أنه لو ما كلنا اشتغلنا مع بعض ما حنقدر نحل هذه المشكلة اللي هي مشكلة كبيرة لكن حلها قد يكون بسيط جدا لو كلنا اتحدنا مع بعض أنا حتحدث اليوم عن موضوع مهم جدا كيف الجامعات الأفريقية وحاضرة بأمثلة من السودان طبعا إن كيف تعمل شنو عشان تطور من مغرراتها ومن مراكم بحوثها ومن عملها وبحثها العلمي بحيث أنها تقدر تسرع بأن تجد حلول للمجتمعات الموجودة فيها في السودان في نيجيريا في الصومال في أريتريا في جنوب أفريقيا في كل الدول الأفريقية وكل العالم ولأن الجامعات هي المناط بها خدمة المجتمع أنا البرزنتيشن بتاعي ده يعني حيكون في أقل من 15 دقيقة حسب ما طلبوا مني لجنة المؤتمر لكن الموضوع كبير وسعيد جدا في أي لحظة أو أي وقت آخر أتكلم عن المحاضرة كاملة لكن حاول في هذه العجالة إن شاء الله أن أعطي غدر بسيط من كيف الجامعات الأفريقية ممكن الدور الممكن تقوم به الجامعات في المساعدة في تحقيق أهداف الأمم المتحدة السبعة عشر Sustainable Development Goals والclimate change فأنا حقوم تسويتش لإنجليش لأنه حسب ما عرفت إنه عندكم حضور كبير من الناس الذين لا يتحدثون اللغة العربية والسكرتير العام للاتحاد الجامعات الأفريقية موجود معاكم وفي سفراء وناس كثيرين وبرضو لأنه خبروني قالوا لي إنه معظم الحضور كلهم يتحدثون اللغة الإنجليزية. So good good afternoon everyone. I'm going to start now speaking in English and I'm very delighted to be here. I'm very happy to join this conference. It's a very important topic. It's a huge topic and I've been honored to be asked to join this uh, the organization of this conference. I have met Professor Bakri twice in London. I can see that the organizing committee has been working very hard day and night. I will be speaking in English because uh, I want to make sure the majority of you understand my, uh, my presentation. I will talk about the role of the universities in Africa and uh, in combating uh, climate change and helping countries to achieve sustainable development. It's a big topic, it's a huge topic, but I will try to, to do this in less than 15 minutes as the, organiza the organizers of the conference ask me. But I'm very happy in the future to deliver a much longer version of this presentation. A quick uh, introduction about our organization, the World Association for Sustainable Development is a global forum we have been involved in work across the whole world, including Africa and in Sudan. We have our famous conference in 2019, Smart uh, Development in Sudan. And we've also been working very closely and we're very proud to be entrusted by the United Nations in helping in lots of projects. This is Dr. Petro Dimitri, who when we uh, jointly organized the famous uh, public private partnership conference in Geneva. And we have also helped the United Nations to connect with academia across the world, including Africa. You can look at our website and you can browse there. 
Very quickly, now in the post COVID-19, and I, uh, all over the world, it has, we have been affected. We thanks God we are here still alive, and we also, our prayers and uh, thoughts with all those who they, the families of those who they lost their lives due to COVID. But now we all struggled across the whole world, in Africa, in Middle East, here in this, in London, in our universities in the UK, Europe, we simply have no students or our students reduced by 50%. So after this pandemic, universities, they have to take a lead in rebuilding economies across the whole world. And more importantly, they still have to come back and lead nations in combating climate change and helping their countries to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, which are 17. So I'm trying on my talk quickly to talk about uh, what universities they have to do and how to do that, and also about some ideas about quickly, some ideas how universities can transform the way they have been doing before COVID and now after the COVID, because there is still an opportunity for them to catch up. And also I will finish up by giving you an idea about the huge and the big initiative we uh, are launching next month here at Queen Mary University, uh, uh, which is called Sustainable Development Goals uh, Initiative, where we bring in together all universities from across the world to work together to help achieve the Sustainable Development Goals. And I'm also very pleased here to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to bring to your attention that on the 17th of August, with Professor Bakri Said, as the president of the Association of African University, I signed together with him on behalf of the association uh, at Queen Mary University with Professor Farida uh, Fortune, our director of the Center uh, of, uh, at, the, at the Faculty of Medicine. Unfortunately, she is in South Africa. She would love to be there with you in Sudan, but she couldn't do it. So we, we are also going to show you, or we have built a dedicated platform just for the African University. And I, at this point, I would encourage you all to explore and try as soon as possible to join this platform. Now, universities across the world, by the World Bank, many scholars, many international organizations, they have been talked about as the most important agency of change, the most important institutions in any country to solve global problems. So we, the academics, we have been, people are expecting us to solve, not just to address global problems, but to solve these global problems. And the sustainable development uh, goals and the climate change is one of these global problems we are expected as universities to address and to solve. Secondly, World Bank, many organizations, and I would assume the Association of African Universities will agree with me, the Secretary General and the President. Now the standard or the countries are now being judged with the quality of their higher education. So if you have a high quality of higher education, likelihood the country, GDP, Human Development Index, all these measures and index will be very high. This has become a matter not for argument. It's been agreed across all scholars across the whole world. Now, why now this issue is very important? Because as I said, we have huge national efforts across the whole world, in Sudan, in Nigeria, in, uh, in Bangladesh, in Qatar, in Saudi Arabia, in Germany, in Britain, there's huge national efforts to catch up and to be on track to combat climate change and achieve sustainable development. So we have to do it quickly because everyone now is working very hard to do it. We also have a changing technologies and the new rules of the, uh, after COVID-19. Everything is online. This is the first time for me for a long time to be in a classroom. I'm sure you all have done the same across Africa, everywhere. So we really need to quickly grasp uh, these technologies and try to come back on track. Number three, global lockdown reduction in income and economic crisis. We all are struggling economically. For us as universities, we have 50% of students number down, uh, which have a huge impact on us, increasing competition in the sector. We are competing. So if you already have a very good online infrastructure, the likelihood now the competition rules are changing how good you are in your infrastructures. Now, I would like to remind myself and all of you with this very famous 
slight I always take with me everywhere I have been. How? What is the succession of revolution? We have been talked for the last 20 years. I have been using this slide to, to remind people and myself. We in Sudan, in, in the UK, in America, in Australia, in Saudi Arabia, all over the world, we went through these three revolutions. We went through industrialization. Germany, one of the leading companies, is industrialization, manufacturing, the UK. And then we went through information revolution. And we are in a globalization uh, era now. Many people, they think we are in the information revolution now. No, that has been done already. So we are in a globalization era. And the good example is COVID-19. When COVID-19 stuck, the whole world it was shut down. So now we are living together. We have to solve the problem together. This is where we are now. So I'm reminding everyone, yes, in Africa, all Africa, the industrialization um, revolution did not succeed. We are still that is small in terms of industrialization in Africa compared to even a country like Germany. But that doesn't change where the world is now, the world is in a globalization state. Quickly, it's up to the university to make sure they, they take the right decision. I'm saying it's up to the university because you cannot enforce a university or the Association of African University how global or local they want to be. They need to be local and they need to consider global. You are a university in Nigeria, in Sudan, like the Sudan International University is a local university in Sudan. They are addressing local problems, but they are thinking globally. This is a global problem. Shera Sheikh, next month, two months in November, hopefully to meet more, many of you there, it's a global discussion. What you're doing now is a local and global. So universities, they need to decide quickly and engage locally and and, and globally. This is uh, the SDGs University. I encourage you all to go and browse and join this, which is called sdgsuniversities.org. Let me talk about sustainable developments. Very quickly, the, there is so many definitions of sustainable developments, but the simplest one which came when the Brendan Report came, this is Brendan herself, the former Prime Minister of Norway, and she, the, the report is saying sustainable development is really the development that means the needs of today, 2022, but also make sure we, 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 we do not compromise the future of our, my children, your children, and all this young generation. The young generation, they still have much more to live. We need to make sure they will enjoy at least what we are enjoying today. That's the simplest definition of sustainable development. The journey is very long, but what I want to, to, to remind people, particularly any time I'm presenting or talking to people from Africa, or particularly from Sudan, this report, the mastermind, the one who drafted this report, of course, in this committee by the United Nations, the Africans have already been here. Sudan, uh, uh, Dr. Mansour Khalid, who died uh, two years ago, or uh, three years ago, actually, He's the one who drafted, according to many sources, he's the one who drafted this report. So the Sudanese, they have a, a big stamp on this report, which is gaining the whole world phenomena. Algeria was also involved in this committee. You can look at it. So the president was uh, Brendan, and the vice president was Dr. Mansour Khalid. He's a Sudanese. And the important thing is, our children now, they need to also learn Although we're doing all this for them, but they also need to learn how to take responsibility for their actions so that they do not become adults believing that nothing ever their fault. Why? Because when I was a child, like the age of my daughters now, I didn't have a mobile phone. Now my daughters, they have mobile phone. They're excessively using it. So they need to understand the responsibility in also reserving and conserving this planet with us. In the past, we always say the adults, they have to make sure they do not compromise the future of the young. Now the young also, we need to educate them that they also need to take responsibility with us. These are the 17 sustainable development goals. I know there's lots of discussion. People have talked about them. But very quickly, I identified just one for today, which is number 13, climate action. And the definition there for the United Nations, you can see, it says, take Urgent action to combat climate change and its impact. Urgent. And the word urgent is very important. If you look at any problem you are facing individually or as an institution or a country, no matter how this problem is big, the important thing is about a problem, 
is not its solution. The solution is not really. Many people think of the solution. But I always argue we should think of how to strengthen our all together to find the solution. Finding a solution yourself will not last, will not be a sustainable solution. To have a sustainable solution to any problem, Sudan International University, they need to work with other Sudanese universities, with other regional uh, uh, universities like in East Africa. I believe Sudan International University also holding the UNESCO chair for school uh, uh, education in East Africa. And then you have to work with all Africa, you have to work with Europe. This is the important thing. We can solve the problem if we all work together. Now, one of the challenges facing people across the world, and not necessarily in Africa, this is the United Nations data base itself, which is based in Oxford. If you look here quickly, the red color, the green color, the United Nations is saying for each, in the, these are measurements of each of the goals. The green color is one of the indicators uh, where the United Nations, they have or they do have an indicators or a measurement of how to measure this. The yellow one is where they have an, this indicator, they have a measurement, but not accurate 100% like the green one. The red one is that's where the UN itself is saying we do not have adequate or, or we, we, we are not very much in control of the measurement of this particular target. So if you look to number 13, the climate change, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight indicators or measurement we have to look at them to ensure we, uh, we achieve the United Nations urgent action for climate change. You can see three of them are green, but there are four of them which are red. That means we don't know exactly the measurement and there are one in yellow. So from the start, we do have a problem, not just Sudan and Africa, but worldwide. The second thing is most of the statistic, even here in the UK, we have access to inter International Monetary Fund, United Nations, UNESCO, all of them. And I believe maybe some people in the room from this institution, they do not have all the data available for African countries. If you look to Sudan, you will not find all the base uh, date, number of kids going to school, women and so on. So there is an urgent issue by universities to try to solve this problem, make sure the data is complete. And secondly, most of this report, you'll, you may find some data is estimated. It could give you a good example from the United Nations report itself. The United Nations currently not aware of data for this indicator. Which indicator is a very important indicator? Ensure inclusive and equitable quality education and promote lifelong learning opportunities. So when I talk to you about this indicator, which is one of the UN indicators for uh, education, you will say to me, Alan, but the UN itself said there is, they are not aware of data for this. Where I'm going to get the data? So the challenge is huge. I appreciate that. I acknowledge that. Even the UN is acknowledging that. But still, with the academics, we need to find a solution to this one. Now, another issue, climate change is not the major and the only issue facing the whole world. There are other issues. And Sudan and Africa really suffer from all of them, I think. Energy security and supply. The main problem for African future development and industrialization and, city and, and if you like poverty eradication policies is energy. Electricity, in a simple words, is a big problem in Africa and you all witness because Sudan is one of the three countries in that dialogue and conflict about the Renaissance Dam, which is going to be built in, or was already built in Serbia, Sudan and Egypt. You can see the political turmoil and even Donald Trump himself in the White House, he was intervening from the United States on this discussion about energy because electricity is a major problem. Then you've got water resources, conflict and terrorism, food production. But again, climate change is one of them. But many of the scholars have argued in different research that climate change is still one of the major number one issue facing the world. And I, I brought this from an example of just one African country, um, Egypt. Egypt, they have the, 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 the global challenges and they put them in a map and they say, okay, these are the global challenges. What are the Egyptian challenges? And interestingly, number one globally is sustainable development and climate change from the Egyptian government perspective is also number one. So that means, can give you an example, it's an issue. 
Uh, the other issue by 2030, the United Nations own report 10 years ago estimated that the number of deaths from dependence on traditional fuel, which is predominantly in Africa, likely to be greater than those individuals from malaria and HIV and tuberculosis. If you look off to Africa, where we're struggling with malaria, tuberculosis, and HIV, the UN is saying the people who are going to die by traditional fuel, which is a the normal way of cooking in, in Africa is going to be greater than that number, you will be alarmed. This is the Environmental Performance Index 2020 by the UN. You can see most of Africa is not doing well because you can see the color, Sudan in particular, where you are now, you can see it is uh, almost in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the bottom 10. Unfortunately, I know it's not good to start by mentioning this, but the bottom 10 countries worldwide, the, the UN call them global uh, air quality, uh, which 10 countries have the worst air quality. If you look to the 10, Ghana is one of them, Nigeria, Sudan, Cameroon, Lesotho, uh, for almost half of five of the bottom 10 worst quality of air are African countries. So th this means the task for African countries and university is very big. Quickly, critique our curriculum across Africa. And I think that's a big message for the Association for African Universities. And I know Professor uh, Bakri a couple of times acknowledged that and he's working very hard to address this issue. Curriculum is fatigue. We need to reinvent it in entire African continent, not just in Sudan. We need to make it up to date. And I will give you an example shortly. This is unfortunately what is being said about research in Africa, and Sudan is an example, unfortunately. Most of our research institutions are underperforming, and the state of academic research is less than satisfactory. Again, this is, I call it critique, but we need to address our problem. Our research is not really addressing the end user. We really need to address the end user. This is the user. This is the people you need to address them. You need to make sure you are well connected with them. And you also need to make sure you design simple technologies and make sure they are involved in this one. Quickly, what is the role of university? This is a quote from the Secretary General of the Association of Africa a very long time ago, 2005. He said one thing buzzed me. This is to a, a British or a UK Canadian workshop about science and technology for development for Africa. Is the failure to address the question of science and technology. This is in his own word. B more broadly than what we did, we talk about science and technology as if they themselves, they can solve local problems. Which means, it's not just talking about science and technology, but the way we address the problem. Give you an example. We need to make sure we involve in innovation at the time of vulnerability, develop connecting teachers, the teacher or the lecturer, or the professor who connect with the problem with the community, support the students' success and well-being. I have heard some of the stories of where university students, they do not have water, they do not have electricity on campus. So this is completely uh, opposite to what we want universities to do. Number four, commit to continuous quality improvement. We continuously need to evaluate our quality and commitment. We also have to widen participation and connection with community. We need to be more, more connecting. We need to be engaging with community. We need to be understanding the issues, how we get students, their families. Here in the UK, as an example, if you are coming from a very poor family background, you could easily end up at Oxford University or Cambridge because the system, the support to students will enable you to get there. More importantly, how we connect this with community. Because of the time, I will go quickly. I always argue for community should be the starting point for any university transformation process. Community, you do not start from the, no, the, 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 the academics, but start from the community. And then you need to connect the community with the university, and you have to make sure you do not ignore or underestimate the role of the government. So community, university, government, and the most important thing is to have effective communication. By effective, I mean you need communication is a subject we teach at universities. You need to understand what is communication, and then to get these people, professors who are experts in communication, to tell you how to make it effective. One example about uh, what is going on, how we are solving the problem here in the West, we're using data science. 
And data science is one of the, of the most advanced subjects now and discipline which is solving most of the problem. And here you can see how data science can solve sustainability. This is our colleague, Dr. Rabia from Cambridge. He is one of the experts, he's Tunisian. And I was very proud when I went to Tunisia to see most of the Tunisian universities they are leading in this subject. And I would like to see, not only just in Sudan, across all Africa, all universities giving full attention to this subject and teach it because it does solve the problem of sustainability. And again, we need at universities to make sure we improve the quality of data. You remember I mentioned to you earlier. So I think universities can have a big role to play to make sure we complete what is missing. We have accurate data, help governments to, make, to have accurate data, relevance data, timeliness, and appropriateness. We call this CARTA, and I think this is very important. Because if the CARTA is high, that means this is where we can help government. Quickly, new models. I think we need to look into issues like uh, applying new ideas and innovation to individual experience, revolution, uh, not evolution, search for new bus to combat climate change and achieve sustainable development, better integration. This is very important of business and startup policies with overall community development policy. Korea is almost literally 90% based on startups and SMEs. Building of an efficient technological infrastructure, funding as well as managerial entrepreneurs, enhancing local community cooperation and collaboration, and using internationally agreed standards and methods, because we remember we said you are living in a global environment and you need to make sure you follow that. I think also the new model I am proposing, it has to be engaging, leading, and following. So we follow the community, engaging with community, and leading the community. That's what the university should do. We also need to, uh, to look into what I call connective university, which means participate, you need to participate, facilitate, and enable. And the word enable is very good. Tamkin in Arabic in Sudan is being used. So we need to be a connective university. Participate, facilitate, and enable. We also need to make sure we are, have a conversation, we are collaborating, and we build a community. So for me, the three C's for connective university involve conversation, collaboration, community. This is very important. And also in the conversation, you need to engage stakeholders and government. Always remember government, 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 because the government is the government. That means we cannot ignore their role. Whatever that government, we need to get them involved. Now, quickly, uh, why we need to collaborate? Because meeting the challenges of combat, uh, to combat climate change and implementation of Agenda 30 needs collaboration. We need to com the complementary of resources. Example, in Khartoum, in Sudan, where you are now, one of the leading health research center internationally, I always talk about it, my Sitoma Research Center, is a leading research center. So perhaps the African Association of African University, they will use that resources to spread over other African countries. The know-how of how that center is being built and how it's leading and being respected across the UK and Europe, we need to use the resources. So we don't need to reinvent the wheel. Agriculture and so on and so forth. Maybe in Nigeria, they're the leading research center. There is something in the University of Abadan with my colleague in Nigeria. I wrote a paper, I work with them. It's called Africa Information Center. Let's learn from them, learning from others. And so on, because of the time, I will just quickly try to reach my conclusion here. Now, teaming across all levels of the community. Not just the highly educated, not just the youngest, but everyone. Women, working, not working, young, uh, rural area, everything. We also have to look into four issues, just to summarize. Implementing sustainability practice are very challenging processes and require careful planning execution. University community engagement must be based on ongoing innovation. And you have seen Bill Gates said that in, a, in, a, in an article in The Guardian, I think in London, I thought in the UK, I think a week or two, 10 days ago, saying with that innovation, we will not achieve the sustainable development goals. We have to, to, to successfully achieve the SDGs, African universities required to develop structures and processes to reconnect and engage with the community. And I use the word reconnect because there were connections there, but we need to reconnect using the new technology, the new changing in our life. A holistic approach should be considered for designing community engagement framework and so on and so on. And I would like to finish here and encourage you all 
this video is available in the YouTube, in our website. We have a video explaining about our project, which we're launching next uh, month. And I'm very pleased that Professor uh, Bakri Saeed, the president of the Association of African Universities, he will be one of the keynote speakers in London next month. But the website is there, and I encourage you all African universities to join both of them, the African universities platform and the world leading universities platform. I will finish here, and I am sure we will continue this conversation. Please look into our website, was.org.uk. And for Sudan in particular, we have a, a very successful project. Even uh, the United Nations the, in, the, in Geneva in 2018, they talked about it as one of the very successful diaspora project. Mm, has nothing to do with politics. It's called Sudan Knowledge. Uh, please go. Everything is there. Everything we do is videos, lectures, notes. And I wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum.